Welcome to The International Classroom, a podcast for educators living and working in the United Arab Emirates. In today's episode, we'll be sharing tips and successes as teachers in Dubai. Teaching in Dubai can be a rewarding and enriching experience, but it also comes with its own set of challenges. In order to thrive as a teacher in this dynamic and globalized city, it's important to be prepared and adaptable. In this episode, we'll be sharing practical tips and strategies for success in the classroom and beyond. From building relationships with students and families to using technology effectively and balancing work and personal life, we'll cover it all. So if you're a teacher in Dubai or you're considering teaching in this exciting city, this episode is for you. <laughs> just start with laughter. <laughs> start with laughter. It's just how it is. How have you been? How are things, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Matt. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, been all right. We're uh, a lot going on at a lot going on at school for us. So. What's, what's that? Uh, we've got inspection coming up. It is this week is our inspection. So it's been a week of chaos prepping. Not chaos, organized chaos. Yeah. Organized chaos. It's been there's been a lot of um, you know, pre-planning, writing lesson plans, looking through books, making sure that we are in a position to showcase what we do best. Really. So it's changed, hasn't it, over the last? How long? When was it? Because we used to get three weeks notice, didn't we? Mm, yeah, yeah. And then it's changed. Was it this five year? Days this five year. days. So five since, days. Since COVID, isn't it? Since yeah. they've changed the the parameters of how much notice to give you. So you do only have, similar to Ofsted back home, is it now? Is Ofsted five days? I think I've been away from the UK that long. I actually can't even remember. Someone yeah, can you can Someone can make a comment and, and tell us. That would be really useful, actually. Um, yeah. But yeah, we had ours in Octo October, November. So we had ours in the first term, get it out of the way. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about it? Pretty confident, actually. Um, tired. This week has been a few late nights. Um, it's been mostly, we've had a, where I work, we've had quite a few um, sicknesses. We've had a lot of cover going on. So there's there's a bit of a bug going around. I don't know if you're the same. Um, in your school, quite a few people have been off. Uh, a lot of people have been off with this like coughing bug. So because of that, We've had a lot of cover to prep for. And then this has meant that we're actually, you know, kind of chasing our tails a little bit in terms of just catching that up. But um, no, it's good. We're in a feeling really confident now. Everything's prepared for the week. So it's going to be. Well, I'm sure myself and all the listeners and viewers will wish you all the best. And uh, thank you very yeah, much. We look forward to hearing about how that went. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be able to let you guys know. How was <laughs> yours? It was good, actually. We had a really good guy from science, really positive. And I think um, it depends on who you speak to has been here long enough or gone through them. You know, there's a team of inspectors that come in and they're, for want of a better word, a little long in the tooth. And so some of the new initiatives that come in, the technology and these types of things, you hear of people's experiences that, well, they just don't get it. My experience from the science was that we had a really positive guy, really enthusiastic, and was actually looking for ways to support us, um, you know, and questioned things and made you think and ask for things like your data and, and views and opinions and your deep dives and all the, the, the normal things you would expect. Um, but overall, yeah, we, uh, we, remain, I'll say it, we remained outstanding. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yeah, I don't well, want to. I'm going to I'm gonna plug this one out there. I I work in an outstanding school, international outstanding school. <clears throat> um, but saying that, and it's one thing we mentioned last week about interviewing and recruitment. Yeah, like we've been. I don't know what it is at the moment. We've been recruiting for positions, and found it really difficult to get what I would consider the caliber of of candidate of teacher who you know for an outstanding international school. Um, and I don't know what it is at the moment, whether there aren't that many people who are actually looking to move over or, and it's got maybe something to do with it, and let's be open and honest about it, school packages in Dubai are not what they used to be. I agree. The housing package has come down and house prices have gone up. Rocketed. Which has been quite difficult. Obviously, we're sat in the garden now. How long we will <laughs> still be able to... Uh, uh, Sunday, 22nd of January. It's nice and cool. It's still hot and it's, it's got 20, hotter. It's 26 it's, degrees outside. It's gotten hotter <laughs> over the past week. Yeah. Um, so how long we'll be able to sit out in the garden for financially have a garden anymore? Uh, I'm not too sure with the way the house prices are. Yeah, you'll be um, camping out in the desert. Well, you're almost in the desert to be fair, <laughs> yeah, aren't pretty you? Pretty much. Only there. For, yeah, maybe further into it's, it. Um, no, it's good. I think I do agree with you on the 
how you how you're saying the, the caliber has changed so we're recruit you know we, we spoke about recruitment and we are going for very good as a school that is that is our aim we want to be a very good secondary school um because we don't have exam results so we can't attain the outstanding grade so for us to be able to uh, in in the UAE, for those of you that aren't aware, um, new schools can't be graded outstanding because they simply don't have the results to be able to back it up um, for GCSEs and A-levels. I'm not sure whether there is a school that has ever been graded outstanding from the off without those no. results. So None that I know of. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think recently, I think one of the newest schools got the, one of the higher initial, and that yeah. was again, may have been very so good, but think- without without the data without what parents look for and what we would look for yeah. your GCC and A-level results. It's always going to be difficult. It's always a challenge. Yeah. It's always a challenge. But, you know, for every challenge, there is a solution. Absolutely. And, you know, the solution for us going forward is that recruitment process. And we yeah. were looking for outstanding teachers. And ultimately, <clears throat> we're looking for outstanding candidates that are uh, NQTs or kind of, you know, not as experienced, but those that we will be able to mold into outstanding teachers because we do have a very experienced wow. staff. Yeah. So that's great. We've got a very experienced staff to be able to teach those um, new members of staff, but the 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 caliber of candidate hasn't been, the quality yeah, of applicants yeah. hasn't been as high as um, when I worked with you previously. Yeah, the caliber. So maybe we need to be an outstanding school to to get that. Maybe, but even from our side, we've we are an outstanding school. It's not just a one off. It's the history of it. Mm-hmm. We've struggled. We've struggled, and Talim and you know the it's company. Nice to hear. It, for I me think, yeah well I <laughs> Not, saw it but is. I just, it's like we're all in the same yeah in the same what's the word same boat as it were yeah. um i did see a advertisement for a i think it was a head of chemistry or may have just been a chemistry teacher at, uh what was it a uh, non-for-profit school okay um that advertised it as you know it was really alluring award-winning you know, voted this best, best and and things like that. And you're kind of thinking to yourself, geez, if they're having to put themselves forward as that and really sell it. Then it must be. Then I think we're all in the same boat struggling a little bit. <clears throat> Do you think that stems from the um, movement of teachers away from the profession in the UK? Because there is, you know, in the UK at the minute, so we hire, we're trying to hire exclusively from the UK yeah. so that we can, you know, market the school as a UK um as a british, as a british curriculum yeah. school and with you know the teacher strikes and things that are going on back back i think we'll see i think give it six months what we're noticing is for a british we are a british school as well so we want candidates that have experience in the british system predominantly a level experience that's what we um yeah. you now again it's flexible because a lot of schools here and international schools will do a gcse or igcse and then ib mm-hmm. so Again, if you've got a good set of IB results under your belt, or again, a couple of years worth of IB results under your belt, you know what? There are similarities and there are differences, but your content knowledge and knowing how to get the best out of your students in exam situations, that's what we're looking for. You know, yeah, I the, agree. the experience can be gained. But um, yeah, enough of that. How's yeah. um, tell me something that tell me something good, tell me something funny that's happened to you these past weeks <coughs> whilst we've been away. I've actually got something uh quite interesting so over the over the um over the weekend you posted a video on <clears throat> of a uh, about chat gpt mm. and it's a uh, we, we spoke about it last time that it was it, yeah. ai was was coming up so i tested it out um and wrote i've, I've written almost every lesson <laughs> for this inspection has been written by <laughs> this ai and um <clears throat> so one of one of the greatest things that i find is when you the way you can use articles so you can get it to summarize. Mm. So I, I would say to it, just as an example of something I did yesterday, was um, urbanization, impacts of urbanization. So I asked it to write a short um, essay yeah. on the impacts of urbanization. So it gave me, you know, five paragraphs on the positives and negatives of urbanization. I said, great, this is a good article that I can give to the kind of higher ability students. Then I asked it to summarize that. So it summarized it, created me a two paragraph, yeah. same thing, but smaller. Then I asked it to turn it into a gap filler. Yeah. So it was, and it was this whole lesson, this whole activity split down into, it took me maybe a minute yeah. to do it. 
<clears throat> now, what was the uh, the quite interesting, the funny part was that by the end of my very long day on Friday, the AI had actually said to me I had put too many requests in, and I needed to wait an hour. Yeah, I've <laughs> so had it was happen. essentially telling me to go and have a break. I was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I've had that, uh, and I think I posted another video about it this morning. Just, oh, okay, just in terms of extensions. Um, ever since everyone has cottoned onto it, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so the video, yeah, talk about using, and you'd like this one actually. It's uh, you can take a transcript from YouTube and summarize it. Brilliant. So if you have videos on YouTube, and we all do it, like the, the post a less one about meiosis or mitosis or DNA, and you can watch the video, but then you can take the transcript, summarize it down, have that, and then you can then create all the questions you want. So your gap fills, the matchups, the language parts we really want from that transcript. It's just, it's amazing. Brilliant. So yeah, I would say um, go and check that video out. Um, it's on deep teaching um, and speaking of that. Thank you for tuning in to the International Classroom Podcast. If you're enjoying today's episode and want to stay up to date on future episodes, be sure to follow and subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. If you want to watch our episodes and get more tips for success as a teacher in Dubai, you can also find us on YouTube. Be sure to head over to our YouTube channel, Deep Teaching, and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to leave a comment and let us know your thoughts on today's episode. Also, if you've got any questions or you want to share your own tips and experiences, feel free to reach out to us via our YouTube channel and we'll be happy to hear from you. Thanks again for listening. So in today's video, we want to talk through some uh, tips and tricks or strategies about how to be successful in the international classroom. So um, we've had a chat about this, haven't we? We put a few we ideas have, together um, and I'm happy to know and give a little shout out to some of these in terms of our fans, mainly students at school. Have you had any students at school coming up to you? No, I don't think my students yet are old enough to um, know what podcasts are, <laughs> oh, yeah. really. <laughs> so obviously, because we used to work together, there's, uh, and most, I mean, year 11s these are, so they are like, yeah. oh, sir, when's your next episode? When Mr. You and Mr. Owen, uh, <laughs> when's, it, when's it coming out? And so reassure them that it was being filmed today and it'll be out very shortly for you. But it reiterates in terms of one of the tips and tricks, I would say, I, I can't help saying tips and tricks, by the way, it sounds weird, but <laughs> strategies, strategies going forward is about relationships with students, isn't it? It's a, it's a real that big thing. I've got to say, not only relationships with students, but also with families. So what we do tend to find, I don't know how much it is at the school that you work at when I was there. This was certainly the case. And what we find now is larger families, particularly being in a heavily Muslim country, students do have a lot of siblings that are all in the same school. And if you kind of get to know one of them really well, yeah. it kind of sows the seeds for the future. Yeah. Of uh, oh you know you want to be you want to make sure you're in Mr Owen's class or Mr Gray's yeah. class and oh they're really you know you get that reputation and then they come in and you've got that instant yeah. rapport with the student. I think at the moment I'm trying to think how many siblings I teach collectively. So like a brother in year eleven who's got a brother in year eight. Um, <clears throat> one of my daughter's friends she's in year three, but then she's got an older sister in year nine, in year eleven, and in year thirteen, and I teach someone in year thirteen um that's a lot <laughs> yeah 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 four girls yeah four girls that's, that's a that's a dad so... that's a dad um and there are lots of there are lots of those you're saying of, that because you have two girls <laughs> he's got four he's like, um but there are those importances aren't there in terms of the relationships that come with that and how you go about generating those so yeah. for anyone listening like what would be kind of your go-to in terms of how you can establish effective and good relationships with firstly students but also then with parents so for me, first of all, it would definitely be being consistent. Um, I sounded a little bit like I'm in an interview then. Oh, yeah. Consistency <laughs> straight away. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it is, is, as long as you're, so when I was learning, when I was doing my PGC, the first thing that uh, Charles, um, my PGC mentor head of the program said, was he, he used to use the term constantly firm but fair. Mm. And I found when I moved out here, <clears throat> realistically, I didn't need to be as firm because the students were inherently a little bit more studious. But I've realized as time has gone on and the demographic has maybe changed or the way, you know, whether COVID has had an impact on students' actions at school or things like that, the firmness has had to creep back in. Maybe it's just because I'm getting a bit older as well and I'm not 22 and know everything about what 
is on TikTok nowadays. <laughs> Some kid walked up to me my, the other day and was like, sir, drip. I was like, I was like <laughs> I've had that. I was like, what? Now I am probably, I'm showing my age with it, but I was just like, what? Yeah. It's like, we're in a science lab. It's like, my tap's, my tap's broken. He's like, no, sir, your dress is drip. I was like, you were oh, wearing a dress. Just use a proper word. No, my suit, suit, <laughs> suit and tie, my dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, just use proper, just yeah. use proper words. New shoes. That's the one that gets me. Oh, sir, those crepes, crepes. drip. I had that in, <laughs> okay. I had that in when I went to boarding school in the UK. It's like, that's, that term's been around for a while, but even so. I'd never, I'd never heard it until a few weeks ago. Crazy um, language. But, but that yeah, is, like you say, the, building that relationship for them to be able to say things yeah, yeah. to you, like drip yeah. and um, having the... Understanding that language. Yeah. So it kind of ties into the, for my side, it's like just communication. You're going to be firm but yeah. fair. You want to be consistent. But actually you do that through how you communicate with the kids. The best part I got told from mine was you shout for attention, you talk for listen. Yes. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot to be said in that in terms of, we mentioned a cultural understanding in terms of how you can approach, yeah. especially in co-ed schools, you know, still trying to build, but, you know, respectful relationships, understanding relationships. Mm. Um, and so it's then about the next step is once you get that with the students, you make the efforts in terms of break time, generate rapport, you know, be inquisitive about them, show caring. Just being and on duty, I find yeah. is brilliant. Just being there when they're doing something, you know, so if they're, if you've got a student who's a bit of a clown in the class yeah. and then you see them out playing football on the field and that's where they really shine. When we're stuck in a classroom, we don't get to see that. The PE staff get to see it. Yeah. We don't get to see that. So even when you're just out on break and you're out on the field and you say, oh, and one of them, one of them absolutely nails it to the moon. You've got a foot like a 50p. <laughs> what a spoon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. have that, you know, you just get that rapport with them, don't you? By Having and it's the same as that. My other piece of advice is do not be a chair teacher. A wheel What's like if you know that there's teachers who just sit in the chairs and teach from there behind the desk. Yeah, I've never thought of that, but I know <laughs> I know a few teachers. Know, I'm sure we all know a few teachers who do that. If you're looking to build relationships with your students, you need to get up, move around that classroom and speak with them and it's okay to have a slight tangent it's okay to drop in on them yeah. and just go how's it how's it going you know okay like that and actually have a conversation with them like yep. i challenge anyone who is listening or watching this the next session you go to is challenge yourself to go and speak to every student in your class it's tough that is it is tough to yeah. make sure that you have a because you know, if I'm, if I've set off a task and there's a, the students are reading, there's 22 students in the classroom and you want to spend one minute, just one minute with each student, that's 22 minutes of a 50 minute lesson gone. Yeah. And it's, it's tricky. It is, but that's one of the, yeah. I think the best ways in terms of getting around learning your students' names yeah. and just asking them, not the time, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know be actually just give them one how was the weekend one did good you go question to? just one good question it's like tell me why you're doing that oh something where they actually have to talk to you rather than just go yeah it's just look at you and go yeah it's fine <laughs> like that it's fine sir it's like i had one kid i remember looking my at me? <laughs> first year my first school i worked at and at that point i was still playing semi-professional rugby and uh he must have been year 11 or sixth form and he was uh in birmingham and he was just like sir can you, uh, can you move away? I was like, what, what's going on? He's like, when you stand behind me, it's really intimidating because you're too big. <laughs> Those were his words. Unfortunately, Those... I've never, ever <laughs> been told that. <laughs> it's just like, it's just really like disturbed. It's like, you, see, you felt like it was just, and so for me, and it's one of those things in terms of talking about masculinity to a different part, yeah. but it's like when you do have that and it may be you kind of think, oh geez, with year seven kids, you know, if you yeah. are kind of, of a certain physique Crouch and nature, it's like, you gotta, you gotta make yourself approachable. Like get down onto their level. We yeah. see with kids all the time, don't we? I think a few of those, and, and we're not trying to, it sounds like we're trying to tell people how to suck eggs here, isn't it? But it's yeah, those- Yeah, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you have got fantastic relationships with your yeah. children anyway, and you're trying to extend to become the, a- And the extending part of this is, how do you do it with the families? Cause yeah. they're the ones who really are on it, aren't they? Like- yeah. There's a lot more, we mentioned it previously, there's a lot more email communication, but the opportunity to build relationships with parents, you know, is actually really key and something I would recommend for everyone to do. Um, and even in our school, you know, you can send out, we sent out a frequent amount, not just newsletters, but teacher communications, 
you know, and then we do a lot of open days or, you know, yeah. open evenings. And there's obviously you can tour around the school and parents will come up to you by name yeah, and speak to you. And I found in the area that I live in, the community I live in, which is where I work, I near enough bump in. Anytime I go into the local supermarket, anything else like that, always see someone I know. Yeah. We... It's the mall, mall of the Emirates yeah. for me. I always see students, parents at mall of the Emirates whenever I go. And my partner's always saying, oh, they all, how are they? but I've worked in three different schools yeah. in the UAE. And um, that's <clears throat> with that, you know, your face gets out there. You go to parents, yeah. evenings, you meet them, you have the rapport. But I also find that, you know, doing other things as well, not just the the prescribed things that you have to do, like the, you know, but being down in reception in the mornings, especially for those families that yeah. are in and out, hell, we call them helicopter parents, the ones that are constantly always being around, always, and just getting to know them face to face, knowing that you can, you know, you can have a bit of a, a laugh with them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. And <laughs> but also offer this as a piece of advice. Um, on the contrary to that, like my daughters talk about them. You see them regularly if you watch anything, you know, primary. And I will go, they go to primary mm. birthday parties and some of the siblings and parents are there who have children in secondary. Yeah. Um, and it's also then just being mindful and probably, especially if some of these parties or you're out, they go, do you want a glass of wine? Do you want a yes. beer? Do you want this? Yes. And it's just being very mindful of that. That I don't see them on that you level. You don't. Yeah. So I'm offering this one out for you if you <laughs> are a family. A good, yeah. Like it works. It can. It's a good thing because they see you as just a normal person, mm. which you are. And you know, vice versa, it builds bridges and relationships, but it's also, I think our, our common senior leader, the one we have in common would probably offer some very good advice on just yes. in terms of maintaining a professional professionalism yeah, at, at all costs, at all, at all times in that. Yeah. So I think uh, that would be in terms of relationships. We start with that one. Um, yeah. you know, hopefully you found those parts useful for me. One of the probably key things in terms of being successful in the cast room, sounds stupid, but we talked about it for the inspection, organization. Yes. I do think being, it, I'm a very organized yet disorganized person. I know where everything is in my classroom, but it is not where it should be. No. Have you, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme where uh, a girlfriend's text her boyfriend says, where, do, do we have any paper clips? And he says, yeah, there's one under the desk in the right corner underneath a cup. And she looks and finds it and it's in the most obscure place. But there's a paper clip there. Okay. He knows exactly where it is. It's not where it's supposed to be. But I would say I'm very much like that. But this week, I've had to, I've had the plastic wallets out. Yeah. I've had the lesson plans, the seating plans. Everything is organized, you know, to to a degree, but in, a, in an environment where this is something, when it comes to organization, I did um, think about, it's quite easy to spiral out of organization in the kind of schools that we work in because there aren't cover supervisors. So you would plan something, uh, this free, I'm going to, or this, this, um, not free. What do we call it? I call them freeze. I call them freeze. <laughs> freeze. <laughs> During but, this free lesson, yeah. I'm going to mark this set of books or I'm going to plan for this day, or I'm going to send a few emails out to parents talking about relationships. You yeah. know, uh, I like to send out, uh, pick three students every week and send out a positive email. Good way of, you know, that's just as a classroom teacher. That's not as a head of department or head of faculty or anything, but I might set aside time in the day to do that. Then in the morning, you get that email yeah. saying cover manager's been updated and all of a yeah. sudden, period three on a Monday morning, you're not sending those emails anymore. You're looking after you're, a PE lesson or you're... Uh, yep, been and, there, been there, done that. And again, it's one of those things where if anyone's listening to this who's not in Dubai, or even if they are or, or thinking about it and going, you look, every good teacher's organized. The rationale behind this is because even from my experience, and I worked at, I would say, some top-end schools, mm. the pace... The pace here is the one thing in terms of being organized is required because you will find that not only it's the lessons, it's the early morning starts and then yep. it rolls over and the tiredness kicks in and then there's meetings. Especially that there's summer term yeah. where we don't get the May half term break and there's 12 My, weeks, the first, 14 weeks. first term I worked 
we didn't have an October half term. We did 17 weeks straight, I think it was. So it's a long, long time. So that, that burnout, and, and again, we're going to talk about teacher well-being in a little bit, but it emphasizes that in terms of pace. It's Ferris Bueller's, isn't it? Life goes fast. Life goes fast. <laughs> and it's true here. It's You will find, you know, we're, we're going, oh God, it's 22nd of January already. Christmas is distant memory. I'm turning 39. What is that? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm turning 39 in two weeks, by the way, people. Uh, it's just like, <clears throat> and as far as for me, once my birthday comes, the year's over. It's like, it's for you, for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's When like, that 40th birthday comes, a lot oh, more Paul, is over. It's like this already. Yeah, Paul, if you listen to this, that's Paul. <laughs> yeah. um, but, just being organized because it's it's pacey it's fast it's fast and the downtime that you get especially if you live in you know a little bit further away from where you work for you yeah, it's quite days, easy yeah. you, you, you commute is 10 minutes if you're walking it's a three minute drive four minute drive yeah it's a kilometer it's <clears throat> it's brilliant for most of the people that work out here especially in schools we tend to live a little bit further away from where the cities are and where the schools are so what that means is that we do have that 30 minute commute every day as well so mm. we lose an hour there and we do have long long days you know we're in at 7 seven fifteen every day we don't leave till 4 30 yeah it's it becomes a, a long time so when you've got that downtime it's really really important and this is this is my bit of advice is to switch off i don't do work at home I've had to do a little bit this week. It's inspection week. It's, it's, you know, it's a given, it's a given. You're going to actually do a little bit extra at home. But yesterday I spent the entire day at the duck pond with my dog and our friends, uh, oh, little yeah. baby. And I changed a nappy for the first time in my life. <laughs> How was that for you? Uh, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Kept worrying that I was... We, were, we went to, uh, we were at the sevens in uh, December and we were back in the back stands watching the professional games. Yeah, yeah. And there was obviously a dad with other groups of men and he was obviously <laughs> just been given the baby and the nappy and needed, one of those rucksacks. <laughs> needed changing and he was doing it there on a kind of the steps up. Yeah. So the way they have it, they have these I know steps what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like almost like an artificially kind of grass, grass. type of thing on yeah. it. So he had his mat out and he's just being watched by all these other men <laughs> and then us about two steps, three steps backwards. There's another group of men, all dads, all older. And obviously he's taking his time through it, and they're all helping him out. And as soon as he gets it done, it's like all these big Irish guys, just a big <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> it's like, so we, all, we all know what it's like. And it was just, uh, yeah, I remember those days, boots of cars, all sorts. So <laughs> yeah, um, congratulations yeah. to you. Just, and it's not my baby. Give it back. Just, yeah, <laughs> that's the best thing about not having children is you can, there you go. Yeah, take it back, clean um, poop. But that's, that's an example of, I will, I will take my Saturday and not do anything even remotely related to schoolwork. I need at least that day. And to some, most, most weeks it's the Friday and the Sunday as well. Yeah. Friday we'll be in school, we do the half day, but come one o'clock it is completely cut off and... Yeah, I don't do anything until I walk in on Monday morning then. See that for me, I'm a weird, I'm probably a weird one. And it takes us on to our next point about time management mm. and obviously self-care is I'm probably going to say this, I like working. And maybe I'm one of those, it's like, I like working. My dad was the same. Um, and I probably geared to like steer myself towards like, podcasts or books or things like that kind of reinforce it. So watching one with... Uh, a few of them. Who was it? Who's the comedian? It's just been Jimmy Carr. And he was like, he was basically just saying, you want to be the best, you know, you want to be, you know, the best in your field. And there's these myths in terms of, you know, hard work and talent. Mm. And we also that it's like, it's just, you know, you can have talent if you don't hard, if you don't work hard, yeah. if you want to I be, agree. I agree. and so for me, like I kind of, even things like this, I, I see value in it, but I just, I like working. I remember being in an interview um, for, excuse me, an interview for a school here and they were like um so in terms of your mental health and things like this and switching off and having that you know what would you do and i'm i'm just like work i'll read rose and shine's principles <laughs> yeah, yeah um and i'm like i didn't get the job and it was talking about in terms of then actually that work-life balance mm. and it's a big thing here because burnout is huge. That's what, yeah, it's definitely what it, gets you. And it's also yeah, that yeah. burning the candle at both ends. 
yeah, when I'm, you first move here and you are living that Dubai lifestyle every Friday or oh, not Friday anymore. Every well, I'm still, still living be. in the past. Friday every afternoons. Friday, every Saturday. Now, if you're yeah, going you... to brunches, if you're out till two a.m., can't do it. stuff. <clears throat> and the thing, one of the big things out here, even for people who aren't on the brunch scene, is there is a late night entertainment kind of lifestyle. Yeah. So if you are into smoking shisha, then mm. people get you know the cafes are open till two, three a.m. Um, what's it called in Kana? Kana Cafe I know in what Motor you mean. City yeah. is. I used to go there, and you know we would just we wouldn't be drinking, we'd be having coffee, chicken wings at midnight, and then you get your four hours sleep and go to work the next day. And a lot of people just do it. Yeah, but that, that is that's the thing I hear. I think teachers coming over, families coming over. In terms of time management, I'm a big fan of time blocking. So for me, and again, it might be for some people it's too much. I kind of look at my day or my week and I will block out time of where I need to get things done. Mm -hmm. Like to the point, even on Notion, I, I've got a day set up and it's like time and I've got my lessons blocked out, but I'll put in there, it's like, right, I've got a meeting or I want to mark this or I need to plan this. Yeah. Because there are, there's all these things in the ether going on around yeah. you. And you've got to get, I, for me, feel like I need to be able to put it down. Mm -hmm. And by blocking that time, I can tick things off. I get a sense of achievement for having it done. And it also then frees up my time to spend it with, you know, family. With the family. Or doing things I want to do, like podcasting or going to the gym yeah. or those things that are finding a balance between who is Alex as a professional versus who is Alex, dad, And husband, we've talked about father. this many times, yeah, 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 about the different hats you wear and yeah, yeah. Alex the dad, Alex the teacher. Alex, the rugby player. Well, when do you get time for that, Alex? Yeah, Alex, the hair model. Alex, the. Uh... <laughs> That's what it's going to be. But yeah, on that, <laughs> get a shower filter. <laughs> yeah, because <I> this <laughs> is. Uh... I had a student come up to me, a year ten girl, come up to me in class the other day, and said she didn't even say hello. She just walked in and she went, "Sir, what's your hair care routine?" <laughs> I was like, "What now?" I was like, what? And she goes, I, I need to, I need to, I'm I need to change my hair care routine. I need to, I need to obviously, uh, my hair, I need to improve it. What do you do with yours? Your hair looks nice. I went, does it really? <laughs> I was just like, I wasn't, sure, oil. I wasn't sure if you argue, put argan oil through it. Argan oil. Argan oil. And then all the other teachers got onto it as well. Um, one of them was saying like, I wash my hair twice, a, you know, twice a week. And it's like one of them is then like a conditioner day. And on Sundays, it's always my like, I sit in the bath and I put my uh, like pre serum <laughs> treatment stuff. And she says, you need to be doing this, Alex. And it's like, and if you're listening to this or watching this, you know who you are, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I, I think she was having one of those days because she was just like treating me like, like trash. So she's learned something new there. This is <laughs> yeah. a good segue. Yeah, yeah. Talking about you learning something new. What kind of CPD um, have you guys been doing recently? Because we have just signed up for the MPQ oh. SL. Yeah. Which I did two years ago. <laughs> Didn't finish. Did you not finish it? So there was an issue uh, with my... Uh, employer? No, no, no. <laughs> well, uh, sort of. It's because I moved um, because I moved schools partway through the MPQ. I hadn't updated the email address correspondence correctly. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Or in enough time. So I missed the cutoff date and it wasn't anything that could be postponed because it was the we were the last cohort to go through the yes. old MPQ. Yes, I have just started a new MPQ. So I'm doing the MPQ LTD. Yes. So I'm still going to do the SL because I've got a lot of the pre-work yeah. already done. Yes. Just means I have to pay again. Uh, I get, oh, stingy. Yeah. Well, it's Dubai, yeah. So. Dubai <clears> problems. But it does mean that I will get the qualification quite rapidly, I'd hope. Um, but for anyone listening that would come out to Dubai or is looking to move out, what kind of CPD advice would you give them? Okay, I, I would pose you this question, and I, I say this to teachers quite frequently. It's like, imagine you go to a doctor. So he's got his, obviously, degree, specialism, and everything else like that. And you go into his room, his office, and there's no certificates on the wall. Mm. And you said to him, when was the last time you did a bit of training? And he was like, oh, well, I haven't. He's like, when did you get your degree? And it was like 10 years ago. It's like, would you feel comfortable and confident with that doctor treating you? Would I? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably. I wouldn't. I would be, uh, I've been to 
worst places when I lived in Albasha. I would, uh, well, the general, the general one, <laughs> what most people say is no. It's like, and they wouldn't be allowed to, they wouldn't be allowed to practice. Even pilots, how many top up courses? Oh, every, um, well, they do the same every, every six months, is it? Well, they've got to do course. some physics tests and all sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I approach education and teaching in pretty much the same way in that, you know, you, we want, and we need to be going through. And for me, it doesn't have to be what we consider a typical CPD. Like we sit, you talk to us and we listen. It's yeah. like, it doesn't work. I think a lot of now teachers and leaders in this are starting to realize is that andragogy, which is how adults learn, mm. isn't too dissimilar from the kids. It's like, yeah. we're talking about how we're going to deliver content for students that's engaging, you know, that's personalized, all these things. Te you know, and then you and stand then you, in front of in, And then we listen for you talk for an hour. And no, no, it's now a case of we're getting to grips with treating teachers in the same way. Mm. Personalization, you know, in terms of then andragogy, what do you need? How do you want to learn? So, and technology is playing a huge part in that, especially for me in, in terms of, I mentioned someone about how the YouTube side of it or Loom and recording things makes a huge difference. Oh, I love Loom. So people coming out, I think if you are coming out here, actually you can come out and learn a lot. Yeah. There is a lot available on, in terms of, we've talked about this before, Collab UAE. So for- I was going to say one of the biggest, one of the best CPDs I've ever been to- Was it the one I spoke at? Was the one you spoke <laughs> at, unfortunately, <laughs> to feed the ego. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was though, and that was something that wasn't arranged by school, by mm. my school. It wasn't arranged, you know, it was quite interesting that there was a girl from my school who was there, who I think you- you were there when she said to me, oh, I didn't know you were coming. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I didn't know you were coming either. <laughs> so the, there wasn't even that that conversation within school that this yeah. was going on. No one really knew that. And there are guys like, so Tom Sale and Annie Price who run this are really pushing that collaboration between teachers within the UAE, not just Dubai. I think the idea is expanding. They've been out to Abu Dhabi because they recognize the fact that as a network, you know, Dubai is small but mighty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of teachers who are clustered into here and actually making that time. And there's one coming up soon, RGS, I think, uh, but it's Friday afternoons. Go along, okay. you can network, meet people, like-minded people, share ideas and listen to, and this is what I like about it. You get seven minutes and you are giving, you are showing how I use this in my class. One of the big issues I have with evidence informed is that people give you the evidence. People are selling these books, all the evidence. Okay, great. How do I use it? Yeah. And that's, re and actually, it's weirdly now I'm going to say it. There's a lot of research out there with teachers going, I don't use this because I don't know how. Like, yeah, I know what retrieval practice is. And yeah. I know I know of these things, but I've no one's actually shown me, you know, what it looks like for me in science with this class. And that leaves it open to interpretation. And Good point. what you're seeing now is you're getting people come out going, actually, um, that retrieval practice you're doing is wrong. Uh, you need to be doing this, the interleaving's this. And it's just like, well, hang on a minute. I'm trying this. Actually, evidence informed is what works for me and my students in my classroom. I'm going to take what you've given me. I'm going to make it work for me. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the issues I've got yeah. with it a little bit. And we we're not we don't have as much of it out here, you know, obviously in England and certain places with research ed. But here, I think it's just about networking, professional learning networks and teachers spending time. And that's the challenge. It's time. Like it's I finding the time to be able to I'd love to come and sit in your classroom and see how you um, decipher the, I don't know whether it's tectonics, yeah, something that crosses over both departments. And I'd love to find a bit of time to be able to, in fact, in fact, this, um, our head of science at school was asking me yesterday, I think, or the day before, was asking me about the rock cycle. Mm. And when we teach it in geography, to the we, when when do we teach the rock cycle to see if there was any way we could link it up whether we could buy we're actually talking about buying rocks <laughs> so exciting <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, uh. so <clears throat> i would love to be able to get into a science classroom and see how science tackle the rock cycle from a purely scientific point of view whereas we try and see it from a more geographical point of view and we cross something that 
again, the guy I talked about earlier, my old PGC mentor said, please don't make geography just bad science. <laughs> oh, I say that all the time to my kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Science is a cooler older brother, is yeah. geography. Yeah, I, I can't even actually, I don't know if I can repeat what I call geography. It's something about, uh, it's like geography is uh, biology's S-A-N-D cousin, I think is the polite way I can put it. Wow, okay. But, <laughs> Cheers for that. <laughs> I didn't say the teachers, I just said no, the subject. Well. I'm going to get some comments on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get some comments on that. I don't really mean eyes. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hatred for the, I'm just not even saying it's just me. Don't really mean it. It's just in jest. It's like, that's what we do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's the it's time thing. I'm... I advocate coaching and instructional coaching. Like I'm a massive fan of them. And there are some fantastic people here in Dubai and internationally who are offering educational coaching you know, for leaders or for general teachers to be able to cope with these and teamwork. But the fact of the matter remains is a lot of the CPD you do, you're going to get certain points with school. So, you know, most schools and the good schools value mm. and see the importance of it. Yeah. How they go about it isn't always the right way, in my opinion. But then a lot of it is personal. You are going to be doing your own professional development. And that comes from yeah. your drive. How good do you, and for me, this is my sense of how good do you want to be? And that's competitive Alex speaking. I, I think if, that's that's a really good way of looking at it. And I think is how our head sees CBD as well. It's, it's very much a, we want to make you better. We want you to be a fantastic teacher. Not outstanding, not very good, not good, not yeah. any of that. We want you to be a fantastic teacher. So how can we help you? It's not necessarily you should do this or you should do this or go to this training course. It's do you want to be a do you want to be a better teacher? Yeah. First of all, is the question you have to ask yourself because I imagine I've come across them before. You meet the and they are usually older teachers who are kind of stuck in the ways, don't want to develop, don't want to know the new technologies, mm -hmm. don't want to use a visualizer. I'm, I'm one of those. I don't, I have not used a visualizer. Why would you need Why? to use a visualizer? Uh, for showing rocks. When we buy the new rocks in. So we get the visualizer over, it's on the whiteboard. They can see the striations or oh, layers okay. of, you know. So sure. I haven't done it and I can see how it would be put into practice, but you get those teachers. My, my point is, I've kind of gone off there, but my point would be is that you don't necessarily do do you want to be better? Yeah. And if you do, what do you think you do really well? And we give it to the kids all the time. You know, we say what went well, even yeah, better yeah. if. What do you do well in the classroom? And then what would be even better if you could, you know, do yeah. some self-assessment, some self-reflection and see, is it that your GCSE could use a top-up? Maybe you haven't marked GCSE papers in a few years because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. So what can you do? Well, start taking the online courses that Pearson and AQA offer yep and then if you ask for the time my school and I, I know when i was when i was at your school as well the heads there are very much you know take a few take a few hours absolutely go and sit in a room and watch the videos and listen and engage with it and i think pearson particularly are doing really well about helping um with helping gcse progress for teachers so they're taking a leaf out of what the book you were saying there it's not just a guy on a screen yeah. reading off a slide anymore. They've started doing, this is an example answer. Have a little mark of it. Okay. And this is what you would do with the kids. Yeah. You know, mark this. Okay. What did you think? What did you think? Put your, they have the little boxes in the, yeah. in the corner, the little chats. And, the, yeah. and these things are out there. And I think what we're trying to put across to you for being successful in an international classroom is professional development is paramount, but also professional development looks and comes in many different forms, mm -hmm. whether it's listening to a podcast like this or watching YouTube channels, professional learning on LinkedIn, you know, collab UAE stuff, mm -hmm. or again, you've got infinite learning here. You've, and again, with how COVID has basically shrunk the world even further, yeah, there are so many conferences online or webinars online. So it, it's really about you know, maintaining and continuing your professional development. And I think my stance on it would be then you do that because you want to, you want to be the best version of yourself, but also you want the best for the students in your classroom. Especially if you've built those relationships and my partner and I were talking about this this morning. Um, do you, here's a question. <clears throat> so as a, as a primary teacher, 
as an FS teacher, she was talking about the pride she feels when a student, so it, this, this all stems from going to the gym this morning and we were in the gym and my trainer helped me uh, basically changed one of my moves from, it was like a chest press or something. I can't remember what Scaled it was. Scaled it for you. Scaled it up. And he said, you know, you're finding this a bit easy. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. And I was thinking about how that relates directly to the classroom. And my partner picked up on that as well. And she said, you know, he must feel this level of pride that you have progressed from going, it was from pull-ups, basically yeah. pull-ups. So I'm not using a resistance band anymore to do a pull-up and now I'm doing a pull-up and he said, okay, well, try and hold it at the top kind of thing. Yeah. So like you would say with a kid, you know, you could relate that to a classroom or even PE, any, any way you want. Now, she was saying that she feels that individual pride when a student comes in and can't hold a pen properly. And then by the, you know, six months in, they're writing their name better than adults can write. Now that level of success is there, but when you teach so many students, do you think that pride kind of diminishes or do you feel pride for every single student? If, if they're a C grade student by the end of the year, they're a B or an A. Do yeah. you see it as, as intense as that? That's a question. I think so. It's a weird one because sometimes, sometimes you feel like you're just a conveyor belt because it's one year in, you get your A-level and GCSE results, and then it's like, right, on to the next, on to the next. It's like, right, what's the next job? And it almost forgotten about. And we've had a few old, so year 13 students who come back, uh, obviously Christmas and breaks and things yeah, like that. And so they yeah. popped into school to see us. And it's really nice. Like, it's really, really nice to see them. But yeah, and at the same time, like I feel, I can feel, you know, pride and I can feel disappointment. Yeah. And the disappointment is more for them like in terms of those students that you know have just had a bad day, like you know have just they've done all that work and at the that final hurdle, and you feel on the day they've not had breakfast. You feel it for them, yeah. and you can kind of live and breathe that. And then the pride part, yeah. Like I've been, we've had parents' evenings, so parents' evenings as well at the moment. I love it because it's done over a system where you can be at home. It's done over the laptop. Oh, are you still using still school? You, Is and it it's school, great. Cloud? school cloud? It's school cloud. Yeah. School cloud. Because also. Like, love the parents to bits, but seven minutes, boom, gone. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> ten, or 10 minutes is our longest one cuts off. So you know you've only got that period of time, which is great because traditionally, like old school parents, you can get cues happening, yeah, timing and yeah. this, they don't want to go. And so it's really useful in that respect. But getting to that point where I kind of forgot what point I was going to make now. How bad's that? I was just picturing school cloud of being at home, sitting and talking. <laughs> We're just at home sitting and talking now. <laughs> I know, but I was going to make a point about something I forgot. Um, Help me. Help me, I Drew. I can't remember either. What were we talking about? I started thinking about School Cloud as well and how I missed it. <laughs> I love it. That's We've cool. gone back to the traditional parents' evening now where you're in your classroom and you've got a table and you've got a queue out the door. No. Yeah, I, I missed the old one. What is that point? It's going to annoy me now. I can't remember. I was making a point about something. Yeah. <laughs> You've Go lost on. it now, haven't you? <laughs> you're, Brain like, dead. you're gone. Yeah. You just look, if you, you can't, I'll zoom, you can zoom in on this one. I'm just fried. That's it. It's been a busy day. You got some red eyes. Are you okay? I think so. It's a long drive out. Yeah. No, I'm all right. I was From up early. <laughs> into the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Early gym, netball. Yeah. yeah. And then bits of work. No. Hey ho. I think. Uh, yeah, I think what we can take from that is that for tips and strategies, you know, communication, support system, mm. actually using the colleagues, the teachers around you and asking people and talking about work-life balance, mental health, yeah. you know, and being happy to say no. And people are scared of that because they think, oh, I'm on a limited, I'm on a fixed contract, sorry. You know, but actually mental health and, and working with those things is, is really important. So my final part in terms of tips and strategies for people is about being mindful, about maintaining a good work-life balance. Yeah. You know, avoid the burnout, you know, do those things, you know, pick up a hobby, you know, because an energized, a happy teacher actually is has a huge impact, a huge impact. We all know this in the classroom. So, and there's so many things you can pick up and do here. Oh, you know, everything. You can ski. We live in the desert and yeah. you can take up skiing. That's still 
10 years on baffles me that that is still a thing and no one really questions it. Like there is a ski club at school. There is a, there is a, there is a, an ECA that you can go skiing. We live in a desert. It's not sandboarding. No, 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 no. And there's a, there's a girl in my year 12 class who's, her family are from close to where I'm from in the UK, a place called Tamworth. And in Tamworth, there is the snow dome. Okay. Uh, it's an indoor ski, proper, it was the first of its kind, proper, Oh wow. proper, like, bit like Ski Dubai. Yeah. But not, um, not on that, not mm, a black, not black on steroids. No. Sco- slope. Um, and that was it. I remember learning to ski there before yeah. we went off on ski holidays and it's still there, still going. Wow. But, uh, yeah. We had, I went to one in Wales, in Landudno, and it was made of carpet. <laughs> Carpet burns. How do you get carpet burns? It was skiing. It was not good. <laughs> yeah, we had that. In, we got one in near us in Burton again. Swaddling coat the places. I'm just name dropping everything, and it literally was like a bit like a bit of holes. So it was, yeah, it was like a Chris, you know, like a noughts and crosses, but that all the way down. Yeah, that's what it was, uh, like made of carpet. Yeah, and I, mean, and I was petrified, horrible. Of falling and trapping a hand or something in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, it was like a mesh, kind of yeah. made out of um, the wire that you have from. Just doormats painted <laughs> painted white and slippy oh no these were brown oh these were oh. this was br- yeah this was a, a rough i'm hoping it was in london now now maybe it was the place you're talking about but before they had the paint job no done. You'd, have, you'd have known if you'd been to swaddling coat that's all for today's episode of the international classroom we hope you found our tips for success as a teacher in dubai helpful and informative Remember, as educators living and working in the UAE, we have the opportunity to make a positive impact on the life of our students and the education system as a whole. So let's continue to work together to create an engaging and inclusive learning environment for all of us. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.